Hello everyone. I hope you're having a good day. I want to just talk a little bit about what are support and what are what is resistance. I'm sure you've heard these terms before. Now, here's the thing. I spent a long time, two decades in the institutional trading world. And while I was there, I picked up a few things. Um, I was a market maker. I was traded for two of the best portfolio managers in history. I oversaw all kinds of hedge fund strategies. And over the years, I've learned that in the markets, the what probably one of the most important things to know about trading is understanding how some price levels in financial markets are more important than other price levels. Sometimes we know why the level is important. Sometimes we don't. But we just kind of need to know where they are. Because an important level is like a crossroads. When a stock or a market or an ETF or a crypto or whatever it is that you're trading gets there, they tend to make a quick move. Either they either reverse or break through. And both can result in, in big tradable moves. So here I have Intel, and this is a five-year chart. Now, you have to understand that markets are all about supply and demand. And the vast majority of the time when something is moving, it's not because of what they're saying on CNBC or Fox Business News. The vast majority of the time, it's just investor perception and psychology that is moving markets. And we have to think about them in terms of supply and demand and human psychology. So when a market is trending higher, it's because there's not enough supply to fill all of the demand. In other words, there's not enough sell orders to complete all the buy orders. So the buyers are forced to be willing to pay higher prices to kind of entice the sellers to come into the market. This forces an uptrend like here. When we get up to a level that we call resistance, well, at a resistance level, the forces of supply and demand equalize. And a lot of times there's more supply at a resistance level than there is demand, but it's just the sellers are kind of holding back. So we got resistance there. We got resistance there. Now, here's why when something gets to resistance, it could make a quick move lower like here and like here. Well, there's a lot of investors who are trying to sell their shares at or close to the same price, in this case, around 68.50. So some of this, tr some of the investors get the sense that there's other sellers lurking in the wings. That's why the price isn't going any higher. And they start to think, gee, I might miss this, meaning they might not be able to sell it because someone might undercut them. In other words, if you're looking to sell at 68.50 and there's someone who's willing to sell at 68, well, the buyer is going to go to the person who wants to sell at 68. Right. They're going to pay. They're not. They're going to try to get the lowest price that they can. So it starts a snowballing effect. Someone says, all right, well, I'm going to be at 68.50. Another person says that mm, I'm worried because I think there's other sellers around. Someone might cut below me. I'm going to go to 68.40. I'm going to go to 68.30. And we get this snowball effect. Now, this is just perception here. This is nothing to do with any kind of fundamentals in the company. Same thing happens here. We get up to resistance again and the Sellers start to get nervous that they're going to miss out, and they just start undercutting each other, and it starts a snowballing effect. Now, why would there be resistance at a level that was resistance before? This is a five-year chart. So this is the winter of 2020, and this is probably the spring of 21. So this is over a year apart here. Now, think about it. There's a lot of people who bought up here who regret their decision to do so once the stock falls off the cliff. And they tell themselves, man, you know, I shouldn't have bought this Intel. I'm going to try to get out, but I don't want to lose any money. So if it ever gets back up to the price where I, where I bought it, I'm going to try to sell it. So we got these remorseful buyers here are placing their sell orders at the same level that they, that they paid for their shares. So that contributes to the resistance forming. Again, it's psychology. Now, what is support? Well, when a market is going lower, there's not enough demand or buy orders to take in all of the supply or sell orders. So the sellers are forced to offer their shares out at a discount, and that forces a downtrend like here. When we get to support, the tie turns. There's more demand or buy orders. I use the terms demand and buy interchangeably, as you've noticed. But when we get down to a support level, there is enough demand to absorb all the supply. The sellers could sell all they want without worrying about pushing the price lower. And now we have the opposite happen. When we get to support, we tend to bounce and rally, right? Here, 
here. It's the opposite of what went on up here. The buyers start to think, oh boy, there must be other buyers in the market. That's why the price isn't going any lower. Hmm, maybe I should raise my price because if there's someone who's willing to pay a higher price than me, the seller's going to go to them and I'm going to end up not being able to buy my shares. So I'm going to go to 10 cents above and the next person says it and it starts this, uh, it starts a snowballing effect. So this is support and this is resistance. Now here we see support and this is what we call breaking support. When something gets below a support level, we say the support has been broken. Now this is important and it's not merely symbolic. It tells us that the investors who created the support with their buy orders are out of the market. Maybe they finished their orders, maybe they canceled their orders. Regardless, when you take demand out of a market, it sets the stage for the sellers to have to push the price lower if they want to get anything done. If there's not a lot of buyers around, the sellers are going to have to offer their shares out at a discount again. So this is support and resistance. Very important to know. One of the most, in my class, I we have various lessons and the first lesson is price levels. Now here's Intel again, this is a one year picture and it's the same kind of a thing here, right? We got this big sell off and we get down here and all of a sudden there's enough buyers to be able to sell all of their, your shares. So when you're in the institutional head of trading world and you have like a big order, a big part of it is knowing where can you sell your shares. So may, if you have a million shares for sale in here, you may not be able to get it done. But if you have a million shares for sale down here, well, there's a good chance you can get it done because there's enough demand around that you don't have to worry about pushing the price any lower. So then we see the buyers start to step in front of each other and pay successively higher prices. And that forces the uptrend. We get up here and guess what? Now the sellers come out of the woodwork and they start undercutting each other and that forces the downtrend. We get to support, same thing happens. Go down, we come back up and now we get to support again. So you have, if you want to be a successful trader, you need to know where these price levels are. They're like your roadmap. If you were in a town you've never been in before and you didn't have your GPS or you couldn't find a map, well, how are you going to drive around? And it's the same thing with this. Now, just say for some reason you like Intel and you saw, oh, Intel is really selling off. I think that whatever news is that's driving this is probably not as bad as people think. So I'm going to buy it if it gets to 20 or if it, let's just say I'm going to buy it if it gets to 24. I like the number 24. Well, in that case, you're just guessing. You're just guessing it's going to get to 24. The best traders let the market tell them what to do. Now, if you were in the situation here where Intel's coming back down and you knew where there was support around the $25 level, you would say to yourself, hmm, I want to buy Intel, but there's support at 25. So that means it might get to 25 and reverse. So if you had your order at 24, you would have missed it. So you're right about the fact that the stock was going to go up, but you missed it because you didn't look at the chart and you didn't let the market tell you what to do. The market's going to tell you where the support is and where the resistance is. Now, the same thing on the upside here. Just say you said, all right, well, hey, listen, Intel's at a level here that was support here. And we know that things that were support come, sometimes they can retain their importance for a while and levels of resistance can retain their importance for a while. That's something we call market memory. So say you bought it down here and you thought to yourself, all right, if this gets to 32, I'm going to sell it. Well, once again, you're just guessing. If you knew that there was resistance around 3050, if you looked at your chart back here, you would have said, all right, well, you know what? It's probably not going to get up there. So I'm going to sell my shares if they get to around 30. So it's letting the market tell you what to do. Know where the important price levels are and know and let the market tell you what to do. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Stock. Uh, stockmarketjobber.com or stockmarketjobber, our YouTube channel. And uh, that's it. I hope to see everyone soon. Thank you.